Hi, welcome to another episode of me talking about stuff that I learnt um, in the last couple of weeks. This week we're going to be talking about uh, speakers and where you sit and why they should be placed in a certain spot in the room in order for them to sound really great. Now I just need to get my notes that I wrote for the video before I can get on, because I don't remember things. That's right, okay, so apparently I'm supposed to talk about what I've learned in the last couple of weeks, so here we go. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been taking apart my own studio, helping my dad um, work on music in his space, and also been trying out a couple of speakers from Adam Audio, namely the S3Vs. Not really for any other purpose, but just for fun. In the UK, we call it shits and giggles. Whilst I was going through this process, I reached out to the people on the URM forum group and also onto Instagram and asked, did people want to ask me any questions whilst I was going through the process of trying new stuff. It's been six years since I've tried anything, so, you know, I'm, I'm taking on all this new information. It became pretty clear that there's quite a lot of, not misinformation, but just lots of things that just aren't all in one space in order to understand how do we even set up speakers properly and know that you haven't cocked it up. So that's what this video is here for. So that you can sit in any space, existing or not, uh, even if you're on the road and recording in a, in a Airbnb or something like that, set up your speakers, know where they should be set up and feel secure in the decisions that you've made. So there we go. That's what we're doing today. So everyone's familiar with this image, at least when it comes to how do we even set up speakers, this image is pretty clear. It shows an equilateral triangle. What it doesn't talk about is where that's placed within the room, what height the speakers are, whether they should be isolated from stands or the desk, and all these sort of tidbits of information that make quite large changes when they are all added together. So. Here's the TLDR version of everything that I've learned, and I'm going to go through it as succinctly as possible. Are you ready? All right. Step one, find the shortest walls in your room and decide which one of them you're going to face. This mathematically is going to be the best wall to be facing. The longest wall, not so much. Your seating position will place you too close to the massive null point in the center of the room otherwise. Measure that distance from the front wall that you will be facing to the back wall. You then take that measurement, which in my room is this, and then you multiply it by 0.38. This gives you your sweet spot. This is your starting point for where you should be sat and where you will be listening from. This will change, but this is your best chance for finding the best place for listening from. Two, or the next step. Find out what your minimum operating distance is for your speakers. Most manufacturers tend to put this within the manual, but if they don't, you can reach out to them and ask. The reason for this is because we are going to take that measurement and draw a line between ourselves and our speakers and between the speakers themselves to build our equilateral triangle. Each speaker will be 30 degrees from center to your left and right, and then the distance that is predetermined between them. This will be your starting point. For me, it's 140 centimeters. So I have 140 centimeters between myself and my right speaker, my left speaker, and between them. Boom, I have my triangle, and I also now have my sweet spot thanks to that measurement and timesing it by 0.38, finding the ideal place for me to sit in. This is our starting triangle. The distance between the speakers and then the boundary walls, either to the sides or behind them, will determine what the SBIR is. SBIR stands for Speaker Boundary Interference Response. I had to check, sorry. Uh, this is the term to explain how the proximity between the speaker and boundary walls affects its frequency response. Uh, so that will be between walls, the ceiling, and the floor. All these changes determine how we perceive its response within that space. Acoustic treatment can change that, but before we even get to that step, how do we know it's in the right place? Based upon everything that I can find, these are the minimum operating distances from the walls, and this is the maximum with this being the distance from the back wall to avoid. The reason for this is because of when you are shifting the speaker away from the wall in front of you, so going from all the way flat to all the way um, out, this will move the null of your room further up the frequency spectrum. The reason why some manufacturers suggest that you start with the speaker up against the wall in front of you is because the the ideal scenario here is that it pushes the null so far down into the sub end that it ends up out of your speaker's natural response, meaning that you don't even have to worry about that anymore. 
This is where that 0.38 rule kind of goes out the window because you're going to have to have them so far apart in order to build an equilateral triangle, you will probably have to shimmy your chair forwards. That's fine. The ideal is to make sure that the response of the speaker within that room is as good as possible. With the speakers up against the boundary wall and it pushing the null backwards, the same goes for when you bring the speaker forwards away from that wall, it moves the null up, but it moves the null into a treatable area. The null is not a absence of frequency, it is a frequency response happening out of phase with the room. The treatment that we place within the room helps battle that and then level everything out. That's why treatment is important. So let's say we can have our speakers away from the back wall and that there might be some treatment or the room is magic and it works. There is another mathematic equation to take into account that will also allow for you to have some flexibility from that 38% sweet spot. You take the distance that you are from your speaker to you, so for me it's 140 centimeters, you multiply that by 0.87. This is your, uh, this is how far forwards you could sit theoretically between you and the head of the triangle. This is your flexibility. This is how far you can move forwards basically. The way we test whether that is necessary is we take a guitar track and we pan it, hard pan it left or right. We move our seat forwards and back until we hear the guitar being completely isolated on the same side of our head as it is coming out of the speaker. We'll find that as we travel further away from that sweet spot, we will start hearing some of that signal come into the other side of our head. The reason for this is because that sound is bouncing off one of our near walls and entering our ear. We don't really want that, that's gonna muck things up. So that's how you gauge whether you've got it right or not. All right, let's say we've got a triangle. Next point is speaker height. You wanna measure from your ear to the floor with how you sit naturally. If you're gonna slump and stuff like this, you're gonna to have to take that into consideration. Um, and then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your speaker tweeter is at the same height as your ear when you're in your most typical sat position. The reason for this is because you don't want the tweeter to be firing over your shoulder or into the floor or any other weird combination of those things. So the best bet is to have them on stands if you can do that. Otherwise, you need to find a way of elevating them off the desk or whatever it is that you're using and ensuring that they are not, uh, ensuring that they're decoupled so that they're not vibrating the surface that they're touching so that you're not getting any additional information that actually isn't happening as a result of those vibrations. Cool, isolated, right height, right distance, brilliant. Volume, how do we know that this, each speaker is the right volume? Now, for me, I can't really fiddle with my amp or my speakers, they're passive, and I don't have gain controls on my power amp, so I do everything within my software on my interface. However, for those of you that have active speakers that have independent volume controls, or those with you with passive speakers with independent volume controls on the power amp, this is how you ensure that each speaker is as loud as the other. You load up your DAW, you get a pink noise track and you hard pan it to one side or the other. You turn up your interface, you get an SPL app up on your smartphone and you hold it out in front of you. You turn the volume up on the power amp or on the speaker amplifier until it gets to 80 dB. You repeat the process for the opposite side, boom. They're the same volume now. Amazing. Don't even have to think about it ever again. Thank you. Let's get to work. Outside of those points, now that everything is set up, the only thing that I would encourage you to do is if you can afford it, whether it's going down the pro route or going down the DIY route, is to consider your first reflection points being treated with acoustic treatment. There is a whole minefield of information when it comes down to this, so typically I do encourage people to go and talk with a professional company at first so they understand what is needed to be done to their space before they go and decide what money they would uh, happily part with in order to get this result. I'm probably going to do another deep dive into acoustic treatment doing DIY, which is what my studio is at the moment, versus Pro, which is what my studio will be in a couple of months time, and show you the results from that. Whether I think it was worth the money, whether I'm happy with the, the change that happened, and if there's anything that I would do differently. If you've got questions for a video that co does cover uh, acoustic response and acoustic treatment and all this sort of stuff, leave it down below, and I'll see if I can find a way of including that uh, answer in that video that comes hopefully in a couple of months. I'm waiting for the treatment to turn up and I have a lot of painting to do in the meantime. Aside from that, I think I've got all the basics covered here. Uh, for those of you that have questions, I'm normally hanging around in the comment section for the next couple of days after the upload of this video. So ask away and I will answer as much as I can if, there is, if I have missed anything out. 
So up until that point, until next time, don't be a dick, and we get to go outside soon, which is really fucking cool. Um, so yeah, happy mixing. See you then.